as a Southern River Band leader sitting once again. We're back for episode three of the Four Wheel Drive podcast driven by Shelter. Joined by Ronnie Dalian, the expert in the game as he cracks his first shelter for the day. Speaking of shelter. Give us a little, uh, Cheers, mate. <laughs> give us a little go of that, mate. Give us a feedback. All right. Well, Liam, I am into my IPOs and this is... A good IPA. As to be expected, mate. Shelter yeah. the best in the business. I think we'll keep it at one, though, because these are pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, they are. Two standards in that bad boy. But uh, You might think this is a beer podcast. It's not, but we're happy to get around Shelter, of course. Uh, mate, we're back for episode three. Been a great little start to our to our four-wheel drive podcast here. It has. We've done the introduction. We've done uh, talking about stock vehicles, and, and I think episode three is ties in really well because this is the stuff that you need for a stock vehicle or any vehicle, any full drive. The bits and pieces to fill your new car up with. Obviously, we've touched on before, we're about getting people into the four-wheel driving game, especially as this podcast grows from the early stages. We want people to come on the journey with us, yeah, get into sure. your four-wheel driving. We're going to help set you up, give you some tips and tricks. Along the way, you'll progress, hopefully, and you'll end up with a big money pit like we have. Yes, exactly hopefully right. Hopefully not. <laughs> Taking out loans to buy gear for your four-wheel drive. I want to start off straight away. Bare bones gear that you must have. Yeah. So with that, um, look, some of these items we're going to mention, everyone has lying around. Well, most of them. So the number one thing would be a tire gauge. So not not necessarily a deflator. A deflator is handy to have so you can let your tires down because that's the first thing you need to do when you go off road. But a tire gauge, most of those you can let it down with, or you can grab a stick or a little stone, wedge it in there, and then lower those tires, and then the gauge will tell you where you're at. It's quite important to have that gauge. And glove box, easy spot to put it. Uh, I'll then move on to the shovel. Everyone's got a shovel in their backyard. If you have a backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Many don't these days, do yeah. they? Or, or 10 bucks at Bunnings, you know. Yep. You, you can get a shovel. And the most important part, like I reckon the shovel is your first recovery device. Yep. Like how else are you going to dig yourself out? Um, moving on from that, uh, what would you say? Oh, one that comes to mind, it's not so much to get you out of a, a bog or a sticky situation there, but a first aid kit is probably one of the first things I think you should pop in your car if you're going to head yeah. forward driving. It doesn't even have to be remote. I'm glad you brought that up. Just having one around, which, uh, you, can you get those at all your general sort of... St- like Pretty much. and like Camping stores? A lot, of, a lot of cars, like if you buy a brand new car, they generally give you like one of those little, little yeah, green car. kits that yep. come with your car. Yep. But look, you can get them at Bunnings or... You know, this isn't sponsored by Bunnings, but you can go to Bunnings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any yeah. hardware store will have them. Um, most stores will, like even like, I think like a supermarket, you know, like a big W or a yep. Target or something. Just a basic like first aid kit. Yeah. And I, I suppose knowing where it is, having it easy to get to. Yeah. You don't lot, want to make yep. that difficult yeah. to get to if you need that in a, yeah. in a situation that needs it quick. Definitely. And and the, the reason for this is when you're generally full driving, you're away from the city if anything happens, it's not like you just go to the kitchen and get your first aid kit, get a Band-Aid or whatever. Yep. Um, you know, you are, you are out in an uncontrolled environment uh, with your vehicle. Say if you're digging your car out or something, it's pretty easy to sort of get injured if it's not something you're used to, yep. like little cuts or whatever. You know, it's just handy to have. Um, also, a fire extinguisher, I would say, yep. needs to be in there, um, especially when you start modifying your vehicle and you've done your own 12-volt yeah. electrics. Yep, seen that yeah. go badly before. I'm not going to mention any names here, but a mate of mine has had three vehicle fires. Right. He's done his own 12 volt. All three times? Yeah, all three times. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's the feedback right there. But they've happened while we've been out, you know. It's like, yeah, oh, can yeah. you smell that burning plastic? Everyone's going over, popping their bonnets, having a sniff around, and then turns out to Wouldn't be a, be a nice no, scent. Spe- no, no. It's very distinct. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I would be hitting the panic button hard if that was popping up. Yeah, out in the bush for me. I do have a fire extinguisher. It reminds me to go and check where that is because I know it's rolling around in the car somewhere, but I don't actually know where it is. So that's a good reminder for anyone out there that's wondering. Yeah, um, make sure they're easy to get to. Mate, I want to have a look. So a lot of when we talk about four-wheel driving, getting into it, people they're nervous to hit the beach for the first time, hit the mud. They're nervous about being bogged. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, a lot of people panic when they get bogged, and just. You know, like I almost think people need to get bogged for the first time before they can understand yep. it's not such a big deal. Yep. Take a photo, you know, show your mates. It's, you know, if, if one of your mates gets bogged, take the piss out of them. Yep. It's funny. 
I think this banter. You've you've done a video on this. You've called it "Help I'm Bogged" um, for yeah. anyone out there that's needing to to see how to get yourself out of the situation. Explain With, without it, recovery. Yeah. So explain to people what you've actually you, you've obviously got yourself bogged here. Um, as we've pulled up an ad on YouTube, how is this? <laughs> I don't skip yeah. that. That's my revenue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we watch the whole thing of this, please? Just. Um, yeah, Ronnie, yeah. But yeah, explain explain what you what we're going to see right. here, and for the people that aren't watching, obviously. So, so the video that's playing here, um, this is a my, my cameraman's car. So Chris's car. We asked him, look, I want to do a video about getting bogged and then showing people how to get out of the bog without having any gear. Yeah. So you've got no max tracks. No, none of no that. No shovel. No shovel. Nothing. Right. All I had was a pair of gloves because I didn't want to wreck my hands. Yeah, yeah. But we literally got this car bogged and the funny thing was we got it bogged and we started digging out with hands and um, Chris was just filming so he was having a good old time. This was actually Some hard work. Stroke as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a doggy one in there too. <laughs> the funny thing was um, this this guy rocks up at the beach. This is at Lancelin. Really soft there by the way. Yeah. So easy to get bogged. Yeah. Uh, he rocks up and he goes, oh, do you guys need a hand? And I said, no, no, we bogged on purpose so we could film it. He absolutely lost it laughing because he thought we were so full of shit, right? <laughs> but we were not. Like, you know, we actually did this just yep. to show people. Um, what I did was I walked around the beach. I sort of showed people that there's always something lying around. So if you don't have your shovel, you forgot to pack it. There's always on the beach, there's always some plastic that's blown up. Be like an old, you know, like a bottle, like a cleaning bottle, you know, like a yep. bleach or something. You could use that, cut it open and then use that to, to dig out with. Scoop. Yep. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how much how effective that is. But the whole idea is just get in there with your hands and knees and then just dig it out front and back and then you can then rock the car out after you lower the tires. Yep. So there are ways of doing it. But look, let's, let's just be honest here. If you bring a shovel, you'd save yourself a lot of back work. Yep. And people say long shovel's better than short shovel. Um, I used to be in that mindset as well. I prefer the short shovel because... I've got the short shovel with yeah just for pack up purposes it just fits in nicely with yep yeah. but also around the camp you need to go to the bush right ah uh, of course you want to bring the big bloody shovel there yeah. right? <laughs> make it known what you're going to do yeah yeah well you kind of want people to know so they don't walk in that direction <laughs> true true um but you know like it, it's just handy like most tools that you carry with your full drive you can find more than two uses for it it doesn't take up that much space yep. because you're actually using it yeah um so you've gone as far as using the the floor mats in well, yeah, I mean, that's mate. that's another good thing. Like if you need that extra traction and, and say you're in mud or, you know, like you're sinking the car every time you dig it, you can use a floor mat that can actually help you. Yep. You know? I suppose they're all replaceable at the end of the day as well. Yeah, that's that's it. You Look, can't replace a car that easily. No, that's that's it. So um, my brother-in-law, he used to be a, a mining exploration, um, you know, guy who went out yep. to, to drill areas and explore areas. Um look at the look at the rock formations and be able to tell if there's anything out there they got a car stuck on a, on a salt lake once they went to the extent of um taking the, the side steps off and walk a kilometer back to the bush to get some you know branches and that's how they got out so there's always a yep. way so if you get stuck don't panic there's always a way yep but if you have the tools which we can get to now to make it easier save yourself save a lot yourself. of time and effort yeah yeah yep. So what what are they then the, the the gear that you you need well you don't need you don't but need what, but what are the basic gears in a sticky easy. situation the essential gear which is what yeah. this is about so there's there's a product called Max Trax and I, I use them I also full disclosure I do work with Max Trax yep. as well but it is honestly the best product out there when it comes to recovery boards there are many recovery boards out there and any recovery board is going to get you out of trouble it's do something for you yeah yeah but it, it depends on how far you get into it so some boards eBay ones they'll give you a one time use right you know they, 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 they disclose they, that they crack yeah right they don't disclose that, well, that I was going to say I thought you were saying no. they actually yeah. put it on their <laughs> yeah no they won't <laughs> they should yeah yeah they well, that should that would be nice for people purchasing yeah I've actually done a video where we um, put them all up against each other. And, oh, yeah. You know. So, anyway, uh, if you have like the max tracks or recovery boards, just to say recovery boards, yep. um, it's just the easy way out. You can use them as a shovel. You stick them under your car. The whole idea of it is you dig your car out to a degree. You shove them underneath the front tires or the back tires. Um, ideally, you have four, but you only need two. Yep. And then you drive the car up on, on top of them and hopefully you can keep going. Yep. Otherwise, you just repeat, repeat, repeat. Yep, keep going. And you'll get out. And it beats the heck out of digging and, you know, yep. and skull dragging and... Going to the bush to find 
sticks and yeah yeah ripping your yep. side steps yep. off yeah yep which you know um or you know it's for recovery gears the first thing i'll go for are recovery boards over a winch over a snatch strap um the thing is let's talk about winching and snatch and snatching as well because yep. to in order to to do a snatch strap recovery you need two cars and you need two people that know what they're doing yep and often you don't have two people that know what they're doing and it's quite dangerous um, and it takes a lot of practice and that's where full drive training comes in if you're going to use a snatch strap i highly recommend doing some training um or you know go with people who know what it yeah they've yeah. used it before well that's what i've yeah. only got my i've snatched a couple of times before purely just through watching youtube clips and videos yeah. on how to do it and when I, the Esperance, when we saw in the first episode how bogged I got an Esperance um, on the highway sand down there somehow, that was the first time for both of us. So the the, the blokes that snatched me out and yeah. myself, that was our first time ever snatching. So and and it was like it was scary because I, I've seen it go wrong too through yeah, YouTube videos yeah. like you've done out there as well. So did it go all right? Yeah, worked 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 really well. Um, it's just stayed stayed calm. I've got over the embarrassment of being bogged and, and thought through the situation. So, <laughs> yeah. um, snatched out backwards in this. Like the front was pretty, you know. I I dug that right in. That's pretty um, well dug in, isn't it? So, yeah, I think. Did make, you dig it out before you snatched? Nah, I didn't even. I didn't even bother. We had we had a. Um, if you pull up that other photo, Jaden, there's like the exit backwards was all right it was, oh yeah because um, you've pretty, made that ramp in yep i made the ramp in so it yeah. came out the same the same way but um if i hadn't have seen anything on it i don't think you should go any snatching if you haven't even no. seen anything on it yeah especially because people think you need to like go like hit that gas and yep. just go for that it that was with d shackles as well not the soft shackles that are you know yeah. more popular now so yep. um super dangerous but yeah i suppose sna- like you say max tracks which are on top there yeah, but um, honestly, in, in that situation, I I don't know. Like Max Trax would have given a go, but you would have buried them. They'd just be swimming in the them. yeah. So in that situation, like because you know, I would have snatched too. Yep. Or yeah, I would actually probably winch because I have a winch, but not everyone has a winch. Yeah, like, well, I don't reckon I had a winch at the time. Yeah. Um, but then if you had a winch in that situation, you got to go forward. Yeah, true. So you need your mate yep. to have a winch behind yep. you. Yeah. So again, yeah. But I think the key was snatching, and um. It's it's to do light tugs first. Yeah, okay. To see where you're at. Don't just go for it. And you've got to have both people prepared for it and in the right gear. Because if all mate's in high range and you're in low range, well, what's going to happen when he pulls you out? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Your, your, your car's going to try and go too fast. It's gonna it's not going to be good for the gearbox. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just gently try and take your time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely take was, your time. I had to clear the head first. Like I, yeah, panic buttons were hit massively because I thought it was going to cost me eight hundred bucks to get out of this because the, the oh really the locals told me that there's a guy down there that'll oh. he'll come and get you from wherever you are. Yeah, depending on the day though and how he was feeling. Yeah, it could be free or it could be eight hundred bucks. Like that's where and I was just like I I got told that you physically cannot get bogged on this beach. <laughs> and I, I just did not want to call the locals and tell them that I had been bogged. So luckily, that wasn't the guy of, making the money that told you that, was it? Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe he sent me that way for a reason. But um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think the Max Tracks is the they're the the yeah. top of the range. You use it there throw to them get in out. for recovery. Yeah, yeah. I think what that gets back to as well. We spoke about tire deflators a little bit before. If you've got those. It's, it's so simple. It's a faster process. Yeah, way yeah. faster process. Then you bring in the compressor to get your tires back up when, yeah, when yeah. you're off. So that's another essential thing. Um, but it, it is hard to tell people who are just getting into it to have a compressor. To, yeah. Even though they really need to have a compressor. Yep. I mean, they also really need to have recovery points. Yeah. And what I mean by recovery point, just so everyone understands. So on the front of your car, you have these tie down points and they're all, that's all they are. Yep. They're for shipping the vehicle on a boat to get to Australia they unload them, they're tied down in the ship or in a container yep. with those tie-down points. Those tie-down points should not be used as a recovery because those stresses, you know, that, they'll come off. It's a it's potential metal to go flying through the air. Yep. Um, you know, could, it can definitely kill someone. People have died from using those. People have also been severely injured and death caused from the tow ball. So tow balls cannot yep. be used for recovery. Yep. 
um, they're for towing that's it they're not designed for shock loads so for the front of the vehicle you can get a recovery point uh, between 100 to 500 dollars depending on your car um, it's a good idea to get and get a professional to mount them usually if you get a bull bar they come with the bull bar and you can mount them on yep the rear point is probably the easiest point to attain and that is just a rear recovery shackle yeah um, you can get the soft ones as well which i prefer to use and for the safety reasons for the safety yep. reasons yep. because if everything if you eliminate as much metal as you can um, if anything breaks it's just a strap that's going to go flying through the air and yes, I mean, a snatch strap can til- still put a really big dent in the back of a wagon or a ute. You've probably seen the photos of that too. Yep, yep. Um, that can do some severe damage. But if there's metal involved, that's when, you know, things end up bad. Yeah. You threw the window, hit the occupant. It's not good. Yep. So when recovering for people who are not experienced, this is slow, steady. Anyone's panicking, calm them down before you do anything. Yep, yep. Think clearly. I think what we're going to get back to is set of max tracks can't go wrong. Mm. Uh, tire deflators help you out on the sand massively. That might be Definitely. your way out just there. You get yeah. bogged, lower the tires. Lower the tires. Out you pop. Clear a bit of sand with a yep. shovel. Usually you're out. Yep. Mm. And then obviously you don't want to be driving around on the road with soft tires. No. Rolly, fuel economy goes right up. Yeah. So but even worse, the, the tire will get damaged yes, from the inside. Yeah. Yep. Wear and tear. Um, yeah, like it, overheating the tire on a low pressure, uh, th- those cords as the tire spins. I did a I did a tire video the other day for the TV show, yep. and we had an expert out with tires. I learned so much from him. What happens is if you're driving, say twenty psi, and you're driving home because your compressor failed or yep. you can't be bothered, well, those tires, the cords in the tires, they're like it's like putting a file up against rubber. They're expanding and contracting because yep. they're getting hot and moved around. Eventually all this tired rubber dust will happen inside the tire and they'll blow out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We've all been there though where it's like you just, or well, there's a line up at the Lancelin servo. Yes. Without, you don't have a compressor. If you're sitting at 20 PSI and you need to make it home. Okay. You have to go the same speed you did when you went off-road. Yeah. Otherwise, Slow it right down. the tires are going to be stressed out. Right, just pump them up then. Just pump them just up. Pump it's, them up. It's, it's not worth it. Plus your braking is going to be terrible. Um, your fuel economy is going to be terrible. Yep. And worst of all, you're going to damage those tires. And four-wheel drive tires, 400 bucks thereabouts, you know, yep. for a good set. Yep. Um, you, you don't want to destroy four of those. Yep. Because even just doing that, you might be fine, but then all of a sudden you're crossing the nullar ball. Boom. Yep. Yep. That Max Tracks video, yeah. apart from Max Tracks themselves, what was the, other, what was the best performing? I'd say the, the, the treads came in second. Tread. Yep. Yeah, treads, um, the tread pros, and then you have the treads. We have broken uh, many boards in the past of various ones uh, outside that particular test video, but uh, I've never actually broken a Max tracks. I have melted the crap out of them. Yep. Um, in episode one, we were looking at our vehicles, the one in the Flinders. We yep. used those Max tracks hard. And they got so minced up, up like but they're still forts. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're like they look like someone's been. They look like you know, people have been chewing on them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have big muddies have been chewing on them. That's yeah. why. But they're they're still good because they have the metal teeth. But the standard Max tracks is all you really need. And I think for a set of those, you could probably get them on special for like two fifty. Yeah, okay. Generally about two eighty is recommended retail. Yep. But honestly, yep. you buy them, they'll last you for life. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Pretty important bit of kit. Mate, I want to get on to some, you know, you, you might have to be a little bit vulnerable here. Um, any experience for getting gear that you needed? Now, I'm going to start off here because this is not a four-wheel driving, uh, this is not a four-wheel drive situation. Okay. But I once forgot my passport to an international flight. <laughs> I want to know, I don't know, hopefully it's not that bad, but what's something that you've forgotten to bring and you've been out in the bush. Um, Before we get there, what happened to yeah, you? Yeah, uh, no, it was all good. I So I forgot my passport to a school trip. Um, so I got dropped off. I was with the school, you know, about to head to Ireland. Um, awesome, like pumped, re- ready to go, can't yeah. wait. Um, Realised, we, we go to check in and I thought the school had all our passports. Oh. Um, I thought we'd handed them in early, <laughs> earlier. <laughs> um, and anyway... They didn't have it, so I had to call dad 
back who just dropped me off and it takes about an hour to get to the airport from where I lived in Victoria. Yeah. Um, Dad was still on his way home when I called him and made it back to the airport in <sighs> like 45 minutes. So do the math. Um, a few speeds. But anyway, I was, I was on the flight. So um, <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Still get, uh, still get tormented about it to this day. But what, what's your experience with forgetting a bit of gear that you've needed out there? I've always made ends meet by using something else, but look, uh, generally full driving gear, it's more like if if like it usually happens if we're somewhere and it's like we're as a convoy, we had a meeting and he's bringing the electric gear, I'm bringing yep. this gear. And usually what happens is there's a miscommunication and it's like, no, it's all good. We've got these tools and we, we've broken something or we need to fix something and no one has those particular tools but you generally make it work with something else yeah right yep. so i haven't really forgotten anything too bad but um i think it's more the case of um people forgetting to upgrade stuff on their vehicle when they head out yep so it's a different way of forgetting for example let's say you upgrade your tires on your vehicle so you've got you have 30 inch, now you've got 32 inch. Yep. To get that extra clearance, you got, and they're off-road tires, but you haven't done your spare. Yeah. The spare yeah, isn't yeah. changed. Yep. You do a tire, you go grab your spare. It's almost got me before, actually. Oh, actually, there was one trip where someone did forget something. You know, the um, like with your Ranger, you know, you lower the wheel down the back. Oh, yeah. You need that yeah. particular thing. Yep. And every ute is different, right? So we battled with that for ages. That was on a Holden Rodeo. We had right. to get the spare wheel out because he had rolled his car. And one tire came off the bead, so we had to change it. And man, we were there for ages just trying, trying to find how, how to get this wheel down. That is, yeah, I've changed the tire on the Ranger a couple of times. It is yeah, very, very tough to get into that little slot, even with the right gear. Yeah, um, and especially having a tire underneath a car, it's a bit of a disadvantage trying to, especially when you're bogged and yeah, yeah, you've got well, a tire. Yeah, not much room to move, is there? No, there isn't. You'd be digging even further. Um, so yeah, I suppose that's what you do though, isn't it? You're... You make things work. You make things work, and I suppose if you if there anyone is if there's anyone missing gear or gets stuck missing gear, it's probably you that you want to be with to, to help you out of it, out of a situation like that. Right. Um, Duct tape, cable ties. If you can't fix it with that, then you might as well throw a match at it. Which we spoke about <laughs> off air. How important they are. I've, I've I've had my aerial go loose numerous times on corrugations and stuff like that because yeah. I just, I've been the, it just hasn't quite been the right fit. Um, tape you know just duct tape it on you've still got comms <laughs> doesn't work as well but there's ways like that i want to touch on i've seen an episode of yours i don't know what the the title of it is but you and torben were out you got stuck a long way away from each other oh that was the simpson yeah must have been the simpson yeah, yeah. that big salt lake and it, got, yeah. it got a bit wet out there and yeah how how do you think yourself through a situation like that because if i say that was me stuck in that position as a beginner yep no idea yeah so i guess we've been stuck in situations similar before so it's just a matter of having composure and whoever's in the situation look you can tell people not to panic but it's very hard to when it's the person themselves right yeah. it's you, you can say whatever you like but if you're you know if your vehicle that you've put all this money into and you've had it for years is in a situation where it may not come out. Yeah. It's pretty hard was to tell. Was that Torbs that was stuck? Yeah, that was yeah, Torbs, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had a trailer and the camera car was stuck first and right. he went across because like, oh, Prado nearly made it. Of course, my 79 can make it. He went a bit too fast, got a bit sideways, lost two tires off the bead, fell into a hole. It's on um, Simpson episode two. Um, Jaden, if you want to have a that look at that. well worth and checking out yeah that, that was crazy and his car was sort of half in the water as well yep. that was a bit of a nightmare situation for myself being on the other side i'm like i'm towing a trailer i've just seen two vehicles uh have you know get stuck on the salt yep. lake I, there's no way i'm going the same way so i went around the long way and that was even sketchy enough because on the edge of a salt lake it gets really wet as well yep. so did the long way almost got stuck myself with a trailer uh, got to the other side, had to decouple the trailer and then work out how we're going to get this guy out. So I just, we just said to Torbs, look, we will get you out. Um, it may not be tonight. It may not be tomorrow, but we'll get you out. Yeah. And sure enough, um, we got the Prado out pretty easy. And then I had to 
risk my own vehicle by reversing in. That's what mates do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hook up as many lines as we had. I had a rear winch at the time and then slowly pull him out. Yeah, okay. And th- we were out by about, we got stuck at about 4 or 5 p.m. We were out by about 9, 10. Jeez. And then we, um, he's, he's done a CV, so his, his front the car just was destroyed. Just on the impact of the dive. Yeah, on yeah. the impact of that. Yeah. It just went. I think it was on his way out as well, to be honest. So we had to deal with that the next day. So yep. we changed the wheels, got oh, him out. Go. Yeah, oh, yeah it was crazy. So that's that's where he's, yeah, 430, there we go. Yeah. So that's where he's stuck. Yep. Now he nearly actually tipped so it who's over. That? Is that you at the front? Uh, or is that the... That's the camera car. That's, that's the car stuck there too. Yeah, so this is me now going around. I'm sort of explaining to the, to the camera what's happening. Um, Jono was filming me in the car. Chris was in the uh, Prado and he sent the drone over. And then Jacob, we had three camera guys on this trip. Yep. Jacob's filming him here. So there was a lot going on. And that's a long salt lake. I think yeah, we look, a- looked on Google Earth. It's like two, three k's. Yeah, long. righto. Crazy. You can look see. No wonder yeah. he was stressed out. Yep. And we spoke about Green Death in the, one of the previous episodes. That's what's happening to all yeah, his okay. harness because he had two electrical fires after this. That. Yeah, look at this. So that's that's where he he got off track there, and he's, then there's he's his lucky big he hole. Didn't flip. He's very lucky he didn't flip. Very lucky. So yeah, look, um, you you make things work. We didn't fix the car. We just pull all the broken bits out so we could yep. get them out. Yeah, I suppose that's yeah. that's the extreme. But when I think about it, the extreme. You know, you got rear winch and all this, but. Yeah. Max tracks, tire pressures, it, all of the basic stuff still comes in very handy. All the basic stuff on. comes in handy. Yeah. And if we didn't have the Max tracks there, we wouldn't have got him out yeah. because I, cause he was so stuck. So when I was winching, I was getting Straight dragged hard. across. Yep. So um, Jono, the uh, camera guy, my main camera guy, he suggested we put the Max tracks down. So I was like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. We'll give it a go. I don't think it'll work. We'll try. Yep. Reversed up on them. And sure enough, I didn't move. They moved a little bit, but right. then they just stuck. And I was like, wow, I just found another use yeah. for these. How you know, that? The, uh, the simple stuff still coming in handy on a pretty dire situation. There. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty dire situation. And um, even if we wanted to get rescued by the truck, because I called ahead just to, for, you know, just for yep. peace of mind for Torben. Yep. Um, I was just going to prepare the guys in case we couldn't get them out. There's like a, a recovery truck at Simpson, uh, yep. at Birdsville. Uh, but because they had the Burzil races on, oh, they said, oh, we, we're not coming for a couple of days. They're because, all blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and all the roads were closed anyway. Yeah, so no okay. one could even come yep. to us. Yep. So uh, I was going to ask you the top five items, what gear never <clears throat> leaves your car, all of this stuff. But what you alluded to just there, because I'm going to say there's not a lot of service out in the Simpson Desert. No. So we've spoken about first aid kits and fire extinguishers along the safety lines. Yep. Sat phones. Sat E-per- phone. Are they E-perbs? Yep. Or- E-perb, yep. Personal so, locator beacon. Yep. yep. I think we should probably touch on that then in Definitely. terms of essential gear for remote traveling. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you don't have to be super remote. you just got to be 400 k's out of Perth yeah. and You're no right. reception. You're right. If you get stuck out there, I mean, you know, if you wander off away from your vehicle and it's summer, chances are you're not going to make it. Yep. So, you know, bring lots of water, uh, stay with your vehicle, have a sat phone, but also have an EPIRB. Sat phones are better if it's not a dire situation because you can call and say, hey, this is what's happened to my car. Yep. Um, can you please organize X, Y, Z to help us out and please bring a couple of snacks. Yep. <laughs> some shelters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some shelters. Yeah. We're going to run out of shelters soon, so please bring <laughs> yeah. some more. Um, whereas if a car flipped over and there's just, Shit's gone really bad. Yep. There's a car on fire or something. It's just hit that EPIRB. Yep. And then the cavalry will come in. Who comes? Uh, they'll send a rescue helicopter. They'll they'll contact whatever's closest by Righto. that can send something to you. Yep. But they're not coming to get your vehicle. They're coming to get you. Okay. So if you have a dog with you, if you have your car and a trailer, all that's going to be left behind. Right. They're just coming for people. That's it. And... When you register your EPIRB, you, you usually put in like the type of vehicle um, and they'll have a rough idea of what kind of travel do you do, et yep. cetera. And then I think there's a thing about occupants in the vehicle. So they'll have a rough idea yeah, how many okay. occupants to expect. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But they'll know by registration. This car's registered as a five-seater. There could be five people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose that's a pretty important bit of information for people that are looking to go remote. Yeah, yeah. And that's something, like a, I, I yeah. don't have it. Something that I don't have, but... 
yeah. definitely would need to look you, into. You can hire them as well. Yeah, okay. Like oh, you, you, you can hire a sat phone. Um, yep. So the ones that we use, it's called a Ferreira, costs 800 bucks and then we're paying like 30 bucks a month and that gives you 20 bucks worth of calls. Yeah. And I, I just always got it. It yeah. stays in the car. Yeah, that leads us perfectly into that. that so my next item is probably, you know, I, I think I, I'm starting to want to do a little bit more remote stuff and, and get to those more hard to reach places sometimes time permitting you, you just can't go to those places but yeah for me i think that's definitely something that i need to look at adding to my kit bag what's what's next in line for you well i in reckon um, snake bite kit oh yeah uh snake bite kit is so not included in your standard first aid kit that, um, that stuff or it just probably bare, should be yeah okay but most kits it's not because the snake bite kit it's like a complete separate a separate kit unless they yep. get like this massive um, first aid kit that has it. Uh, the cool thing with first aid training is that's probably another thing you can bring with you is the training because if you have a snake bite kit but you don't have the training and using it, yes, it's better to have it and not know what to do with it than to not have yeah. it. But yep. it's it's good to know. And now standard first aid these days uh, used to be advanced but now standard first aid you learn snake bites. Right. In WA at least. I'm not sure about other states and territories but um, yeah. So just wanted to mention that is important and um some kind of water tank that's semi-permanent in your car at least yep. you got a place that you always have your water you're never going to forget and like backup water not have all the water in in one place yeah so if something does burst or whatever or something gets contaminated perhaps you still have that other um the other container to help you yep. out yeah that's actually another thing i don't have a i've got jerry's water just carriers but i don't have an actual tank which i'd love to add just yeah. as that not the drinking it's water, handy but to just have a the, tank. yeah 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 but i recommend if you have a tank just make it so you can use it as drinking water yep. um you can always boil it yeah okay. worst case scenario yep. yeah yeah yep. but i guess that's probably the number one thing to mention we talked about e talked about satellite phones essential stuff to have with your car but i think i think if you have a billy can on board now stick with me here <laughs> you get completely stuffed in the bush you're stuck your car's done for you're freaking out Grab your billy can, start a fire, providing some fire ban. Boil up a cup of tea or a coffee, sit down in some shade and think about your situation and what are you going to do about it? Because the worst thing you can do is panic about it. It's not going to do anything for the situation. It'll probably make it worse. It's very good advice. And yes, this is 2023 and Ronnie Daly is talking about bringing a billy can to camp. But 100%. Some, uh, <laughs> some very good insight there. This is the Four Wheel Drive podcast driven by Shelter. You're joined by Ronnie Dahl and Liam Duggan. We are about to enter around the fire pit, our favourite segment, I would say, Ronnie. Uh, this is where you we never know hear, what comes. This is where we get to hear from the viewers. They they hit us up at uh, Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. Four WD. I just want to reiterate that. We're going to throw across to Jaden again. We haven't heard him today. Yeah. Good day, boys. You there, mate? How are you? Yeah, no, nah, it's been good so far. Just been listening. Very good. I'm um, going to shut the laptop, mate. So it's over to you. All uh, right. We've got a we've got a few questions this episode. Uh, we'll all right. Start us off. Um, I know you guys have hit this already a little bit, but preparations precautions and essential equipment for solo vehicle travel uh, that one's from mark salera okay well for solo vehicle travel you're obviously going to be into it right um you need to be careful about what you do out there so don't do anything you normally wouldn't do any risk taking has got to be negated uh if you get to a track and there's a hard line there's an easy line take the easy line um I know it sounds a bit, you know, boring, but you're out there on your own. You're super remote. I would also tell people where you are, where you're going, um, so that when you don't come out the other side, when they're expecting you to come out the other side, they know where to look for you. They'll put that in the planning. Yep. Um, that's probably about it. And I, with vehicle mods, I'll definitely look into getting a winch so you can self-recover. Yep. yep. Um, solo travel, it doesn't... Yeah, it's not, it's not just about being on your own but a single vehicle a winch can come yep. in handy yep I've put that on never had to use my winch to this point it's but insurance the one time yeah insurance yeah. 100% when I think about that solo travel I like to know so there's some things that just will, will never leave my drawers yep um, they're in there every time I leave to drive to the coffee shop they're in there every time I drive to Broom it's um, if you've got that those staple items that you know are in there just leave them in there there's your safety net 
with a couple of those yeah. things around solo travel examples for me there's always going to be recovery gear i always have my solar blanket in the car just in case um little bits and bobs like that if you go on solo i think just making sure that they're always in the car never leave then you drive off you haven't forgotten them yeah uh, that's actually i've never really thought about a solar blanket that way but like if your vehicle breaks down you can't drive it you can't charge your batteries yep. so at least you've got your solar keeping your fridge going yeah, keep keep those shelters cold. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but also, you know, if you've got a powered water pump, at least you don't have to stuff up your tank yep. to get the water out or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Um, on essential gear, we're looking at compressors, especially if you've got uh, tire deflators and stuff, you need to pump your tires back up. Uh, Mini Chad 19 asks, what type of compressor setups do you run and what do you recommend? Is an onboard worth it or should I just stick to portable? I think we can both agree that onboard is worth it if you are going to get into full driving, like you know, like keeping things in your yep. car. Um, what What do you think? Yeah, I, see, I've done both. I started portable, and I have the the big dual Kings compressor, so it's not a fancy one, but it's done a really good job for the last four or five years. And I was, I stored that under one of the. Uh, you know the vacant space next to your drawers are down the wing kit oh yeah down the sides so, yeah, so yeah. I'd, if I had stuff on top of that wing kit though I would need to move all of that aside take apart the bloody you <laughs> yeah. know I had to the get in there get fish it out. it out big heavy thing it sort of didn't come out clean you sort of had to wheel it away but I, I've since learnt my lesson I've got an onboard compressor now it's, what do you got now? Uh, so it's still the same so yeah. I've got the same thing but I've just I've mounted it inside that wing kit Okay. Got the switch outside on the on the panel. Um, it's just easy to access. All I've got to yeah. do is fish my hose out of my drawer, yep. plug it in, and away I go. So, yeah, I, I can vouch for having an onboard compressor. Um, you know, yeah. I agree because mounted. now remember you asked me earlier if there's something you left home, right? Uh, so on the Troopy, I don't have one mounted yet. So I I have the ARB in a box. Yep. Now I have multiple times left that at home, but the camera car either has one or my other car has one yep. so if my crew are coming with me we'll take both cars and then i'll just have to pump up from that one yep. so it hasn't really been a big deal yep. but i would have left it so yeah i definitely onboard compressor and what type of compressor uh if the bigger your tires are the more the the better the compressor you want yep. you want something that can pump it fast yeah there's nothing worse than weighing around yeah yeah well that that's the thing about the jewel i know it's you know kings they've got some great they're, they're usually known as a little bit of the cheaper gear but it's lasted me a, a long time and it pumps the tires up like that yeah um, if you're lucky pump. you have one to last good yeah yeah keep going with it I'm, <laughs> I'm always done before any of my mates so yeah, um, yeah. but yeah I'm on board for mine definitely yeah get that mounted uh, look you can get like a $50 compressor from like super cheap auto and they're fine oh, and I've got one and I used it for the Hilux when it was stock on stock wheels smaller wheels fine but if you get bigger tires yeah, yeah upgrade get, your compressor before the tires they get hot quick on those that too and then the hose melts yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right Jordan. yeah um that's everything we've got for uh for this episode we'll get some more in next beautiful week, all yeah, right that's it. look forward to it no mate worries. that's ep three you'll yeah. find if us you guys got a question yeah the four-wheel drive podcast on instagram back chat studios on youtube this is the four-wheel drive podcast driven by shelter ronnie i'll see you next week yeah I'll see, yeah see you next week mate and, uh, all right, eh? yeah yeah i'll just definitely go this one try to like it next time he's had three he's just been hiding <laughs> <laughs> maybe two <laughs>